Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I shall be doing over this rather sad looking model of yesteryear, a number Y12, it's the 1899 London horse drawn bus. And this is a first series model which came out between 1956 and 1959. So let's have a look at this model and see what we are in for. First up, this model was donated by number 17. And number 17 is a Joshua Brown from Ontario in Canada. So thank you, Joshua. Right, on the underside there, you can see it says, Made in England by Lesney, number 12. You can also see there's a number of chips on the underside as well as the body. The front drawbar on this model is broken off and missing, which is a little bit of a shame. That's rather a major component there that I've got to buy a replacement for. Uh, just every one of the stickers needs replacing. The red paint's chipped, especially on the back there. That rear staircase is almost bare of, of paint. The wheels are in good condition and they're not broken. There's a strange hole at the top here on both sides. I will show you what those are for coming up later in this video. Here's a close up of the driver. He's not particularly well detailed, but I do like his hat. When I first saw it, I thought it was a, a British army helmet he was wearing, but I think it's meant to be a bowler hat. So all sides are the same, chipped and worn, like it's been thrown in a toy box of other cars multiple times. This one came with one horse. It looks like it's had tape taped around it, probably to stop it getting lost. They're painted dark chocolate brown uh, with gold and white highlights. And this is where it would go. This is one of two which would attach to the missing drawbar. So I ordered a new drawbar from recovertoy.com and I must say I'm quite impressed with their quality of service. They post out really quick and the majority of their items are really good. This one here is not a straight replacement for the original and you'll see why because the original has not only the drawbar but also the attaching base plate there that fits to the underside of the model. Oh, this is the guy I wanted to find out what his name was. So to get that drawbar off, I need to remove the front axle, which means removing the wheels. Now, a guy called Rob Heppel from West Yorkshire in the UK sent me this little tool he's made. He says watchmakers use something similar to remove the hands from a watch without damaging the face. So the idea is that I slip it over the end of the axle, and then when I use my Dremel tool, there's no risk of me damaging the wheel. So I'm going to give this a test now and uh, I think it's pretty good. I might actually have to make one of these out of a piece of spring steel. A good idea there Rob, thank you very much. So the wheel comes off as simple as that and I'm pleased to say it suffered no damage whatsoever. So now that axle has been removed I can give some thought into removing the remnant of the drawbar. Before I do that, I've got to work out how it's attached to the model. Now these holes I was talking about on the side there, you can see there are two pegs on the side and in the centre of the top deck seating. And those pegs hold the upper deck into position. That's all it is. It just clips in and it's been there for in excess of 50 years now, so it obviously works. So to remove this top deck seating section, I have to simultaneously flex the body outboard and lever the seating platform up using these two small flat bladed screwdrivers. It's a little bit awkward doing it on your own, but once you've got one of the pins out, as I have here, the right hand side one, I can now jiggle the platform and the left hand one comes out quite easily. And I'm rather surprised how small these little dimples or pins are. They are almost invisible to the naked eye 
and yet they do such a good job of holding the seats in it's, it's quite remarkable and a great design feature done by Matchbox. Here's a close-up of one of those pins just to show you what I'm talking about. So now I've removed the top deck I can see inside the cab and not one but there's two rivets there holding that drawbar in position. Bit of overkill in my opinion. Nonetheless I'm going to have to remove them and I'm going to be using this drill just to take the upper edge of the rivet off and hopefully be able to pry the drawbar supporting base plate off this model. So looking in there, I think maybe I've removed enough, maybe I've removed enough material to get this apart. Now once again, using this fine flat bladed screwdriver, I've actually ground the tip down to make it a little bit thinner specifically for this task. I've managed to squeeze it in a little gap there and just by wiggling and prying, the rivets are drawn through the, their holes and that draw par base plate comes away which means I can now fit the new one. I mistakenly thought that those leaf springs and axle supports were part of it but I soon realized that I was actually pulling on something that was attached to the the main model. Well eventually I got this piece off and here's a close-up of it now it's actually two pieces but they're, they're molded in one. Uh -uh. I'm going to have to separate that plate from the original part so I can attach it to this reproduction drawbar and then refit it to the model. Not quite what I was expecting. It's going to be a little bit fiddly I fear. So to start with I've got to grind off the old tip of the drawbar there and just have the basic attachment plate to work with. So using my Dremel and the cylindrical grinding tool I take the majority of the material off and then I finish it off with a few strokes of a small hobby file there. And this is the part I was after. Now I have to attach it to the new drawbar which means I'm going to have to drill a hole in the middle of that to accommodate this pin. I think that pin is a little bit too large and if I drilled a hole to accommodate it, it would weaken that little plate too much. So I'm going to grind that pin down so it's a little bit thinner and that means that I don't have to drill such a large hole in that base plate. Before I do that, I just take off some of the flashing and casting lines that are still on this drawbar. Overall it's pretty good but I just wanted to make it as good as possible. This model is going to take a lot longer than I, I thought. It's a very complicated model when you get down to the nuts and bolts and I must admit I did not quite know what I was letting myself in for. Now I use my spring-loaded center punch to make a point there where I can start drilling. So that's the center of the, the hole I'm going to drill. Here I've managed to find a drill that's suitably sized for the size of the pin that I've created. Now I'm just very carefully drilling in the center of that plate. I think I've pretty much nailed that, which uh, is very unusual for me. Seldom do I get it right first time. And that just force fits on there like that. And I'm very careful, I'm scared I'm gonna break something. And now this pin, to try and hold this thing together so it's all one solid assembly, I flatten the head of that pin using a parallel punch and a hammer. And now this drawbar is ready to fit back to the model. So I'm going to do that before I paint the model. Before I paint it, I've got to find some matching paint. Now I've got all these different reds. I end up going for the Mr. Hobby 327 gloss red. It's a little bit too bright. 
So I had a fair splash of this number 33 russet just to dull it down a little bit. Now, interesting, I was mixing up some dark blue paint the other day from light blue and I was adding black and somebody said, why don't you add dark blue? Which I thought was, of course, obvious really. And why hadn't I thought of that before? So today I'm adding some dark red to the lighter red to try and make a medium red and it worked quite well. So as usual, when I'm happy with the, the paint, I don't know how long it's going to sit around for because you can never tell when you're going to have to go shopping with the wife or whatever. So I always cap these things off and set them aside so they're ready to use as and when required. I do that so they don't dry out and cause me to have to make up a second batch when I need it. So that's the red. Now I've got the brown horse and the tan colored top deck and seating. Well, for the tan, I use these three different paints here. One Tammy a white and the two Mr. Hobbies. And this is one shade lighter than the, than the paint is, but through experience and advice, I realized that paint dries a shade or two darker. So I think this is perfect. And uh, I'm quite happy with that. Now that the paint's been mixed up, I did a test, by the way, on the wheel before I started here to make sure that this gel paint stripper wouldn't damage the rear wheel. And I've just put a liberal coating on all the parts and I'm waiting for all that paint to soften up as per normal. Then I scrub it off with a variety of soft brushes, hard brushes and jets of water in the sink. This model particularly hard. A lot of angles and little hidey holes there for the paint to cling on to. Once again, as I said before, I didn't quite know what I was letting myself in for, but look at this staircase. I have to pick away at all of those with these dental picks. And I also use this rather overused tiny little brush in the end of my Dremel just to try and grind out the last little scraps of paint that are, I'm having trouble to get out. So that's pretty good. A little bit there behind the wheel I missed, but I got that before I paint it. So I'm now going to refit the drawbar and then I can undercoat these parts. Now this is a very, very tight fit because remember I only removed the barest minimum amount of metal and I physically can't push it back into position with my fingers. So what I do is I get this little um, drill attachment here, a little hex headed attachment for my drill. I use it as a punch. I just give it a couple of strikes with that small hammer and it goes in and it's, it's pretty solid. It's not exactly sitting flush so I gave it a second whack and it came good. So here's a picture of the drawbar. I had to bend it down slightly because it was up. It was raised a little bit too high. Now I'm looking at this horse here that I've stripped and it's got some strange little bumps on the back there, which I think might be casting errors. And there's two on the other side as well. There's also a little bit of flashing there on the spine and the hind quarters. I just clean it off with some hobby files. This pin here is broken off of the original drawbar and it's jammed in there. I guess it's just a, a force fit in the factory and I'm trying to get it out with the tip of the dental tools and here I'm desperate. I'm trying to lever it out with a couple of map pins, but no, it's not happening. So I end up adopting for this little hand drill and I'm drilling a very small hole where I thought was the center of the pin with the intention of drilling it out to the correct size with the proper drill. Uh, when I inspect this, I'm a little bit off target there. I, I didn't center punch it because the, the remnant of the pin had an angular end on it. I figured the center punch would punch off center anyway. So using the drill, I kind of make some corrections and go in and I just clean off the edge of the hole with some small hobby files. And I think that's going to look good. Just got to get me a second horse. 
I just need to get myself now a second horse and this thing will be ready to roll. Now before I paint this with some undercoat, I'm masking off the wheels. I'm trying to preserve the original metallic wheels here. So a bit fiddly, but I mask them off. I also mask off the axle because I want the wheels to look as original as possible. I've got the, the front ones off, so they are going to be original. I wanted the back ones to match. They wouldn't match if I coated them with some undercoat. You'd probably be able to tell that the spokes weren't as crisp as they should be. So I'm going to hold this model with some hemostats to spray it. I'm using the fine grey undercoat primer from Tamiya. Does a great job, doesn't conceal any of the details. And this model's got a lot of them. All those seats are made of individual planks, as is the wooden floor. That staircase I thought would be troublesome to get even coverage, but wasn't as difficult as I anticipated. And this paint f managed to cover behind the wheels that I masked as well. It got in there quite well. So here's all the undercoated parts. Let's have a look at some of the details. Let's look at this top deck to begin with. You can see the planks of wood I'm talking about on all those little seats. And the driver, he looks happy. He looks like he's happy in his work. He's uh, wearing a bowler hat and a smart jacket and pants with shoes. The horse equally detailed. He's got ears, eyes, nose, nostrils and mouth, which are all good things for a horse to have. He's also got a tail <laughs> and uh, some harness attachments there and a bridle. So all a bit fiddly for whoever cast this model originally, you know, they would have had to have made a miniature, I guess, which would have been very time consuming. Now let's have a look at the bus. It is what it is. It's a bus. I'm sure they weren't overly detailed. They were functional, designed light to carry passengers drawn by horses. There's a little rain shelter there by the door, the rear door for the people that uh, want to sit in the lower deck when it's raining. And a footrest for the driver, if you hadn't noticed that before. So I've got to get myself a second horse. And again, recovertoy.com, I did a mass order from them. So this is the left hand horse for this model. I don't know where they're sourced from, but they do a fairly good job. There's a little bit of flashing on here that needs to be removed and some molding seam lines. The left front hoof looks a little bit ordinary so I struggle to get that sculpted if you will to look like a normal one using the my little hobby set. So this is another example of how complicated this model became and very time consuming, taking nearly twice as long as a, as a normal model might take. And it's all because of this extra work I'm having to put in to get it looking as good as I can. Taking down that molding seam off its back, not only on its back, there's also one on its belly. Quite a lot of excess material there that needed to be taken off and eventually I got to a point where I could undercoat it. And the undercoat's great, it kind of, I don't know if you noticed, but the metal that this is made of had a bit of a grain in it. The original was much smoother, but with the undercoat on, the grain has seemed to have been concealed somewhat and the little horse looks more like an original part now. So now it's time to paint all the parts in readiness for reassembly. And I can't wait to be putting on some new decals on this model too, as they are a very important feature of this horse-drawn bus. Now the red paint I mixed up went on really nice. I'm 
pleased with the results so far. This tan paint, when I was, after I sprayed this, I looked at this thing and I thought, that looks just like an original top deck. It come up really good. For the horse, I used Tamiya Flat NATO Brown. Uh, the only reason I used this is because I couldn't be bothered going down to my local hobby shop and getting the gloss version. In fact, I don't even know if there is a gloss version of NATO Brown. So what I'm going to be doing is after I've painted these horses and done all the detailing on them, I'm going to give them a coat of Tamiya Clear so they look all glossy and new like the original model. So I've, I've stuck myself a matchstick in the hole inside of the horse as you can see it's quite handy to, to hold and paint. I'll wait for those to dry. Uh, I want them to be really dry as well. So I put all these parts in my small little toasty oven which I've found to be quite the asset really I'm so glad I bought it uh, this thing I checked before I I've got a little thermometer in there I drilled a hole in the top and this thing on even on that minimum setting it runs at 70 to 80 degrees Celsius and it's really good for thoroughly curing the paint so that when you handle the model when you're reassembling it you don't leave any fingerprints behind like I say one of the best things I've got and I use it all the time I think it's only failed me once when one model the color changed for some reason I must have scorched the paint uh, I've cleaned the front axle up on my little 12 volt chuck and I'm using my tablet here to bring up some images of an original model in good condition and I want to look at these horses to get to see exactly what people painted these horses like in the day just checking there the driver's got a gloss black hat on and you can see the horses have got gold fittings around their necks and they've got a white mane and a white tail so it's good having those photographs available imagine in the say go back 30 years I'd have had to have driven down to the local library and seen if they had a book on matchbox cars and, and uh, it would have been so difficult to source images like, like we can today on the internet we're so lucky and so fortunate and everything's just the internet is such a, a great aid for this hobby as, as well as others of course so that was the gold trim on the horse is painted now I've just painted that bowl hat on the driver I'm using Tamiya paints here this one's gloss white and I'm just it looks very basic but these were painted very basic as far as I know a lot of the painting was outsourced to families to take take vehicles home and do piecework at home painting them on the kitchen table whilst they're listening to the radio by candlelight who knows gaslight maybe so they were painted very basically all the details now I've only got one axle end here today to do and using that nail punch in my drill press it was literally a five second job although it did take me about 20 minutes to carry the camera stand and lighting set up out to my shed and set it up so there we go a five second burst there that took 20 minutes now recover toy once again like I said I did a bulk order for not just this model but multiple models so there's still more to come I also ordered these uh, reproduction decals and these ones look at these up close they are absolutely beautiful reproductions they are fantastic quality and I'm very very pleased because I have been burnt in the past ordering decals online they haven't been quite to the standard I've expected in fact early on in the piece I was ordering decals and they were coming as stickers and uh, people have been printing them off at home and selling them as decals and they were just absolute rubbish and I, that was when I started making my own but I don't have the ability to print white 
I know that you can still buy printers that print white, but they're extremely expensive and ridiculous. And I would never consider buying one. So uh, I, for this type of model where there's white, a lot of white in the decals, I'm basically have no option but to order them online from the professional decal manufacturers. And it's just as well, really, because it can be a bit of a headache and very time consuming making your own. And as you can see on this model, there is heaps of stickers. There is not one flat area that doesn't have some form of decal on it. Even on the back of the staircase, there is stickers and adverts uh, the ones on the back of the staircase were particularly awkward because it's a spiralling angle that you've got to get the decal on. I thought I was going to stuff it up, but I didn't. Anyway, now I've put all the decals on, I can simply click that upper deck back in. And refit these horses. The holes I drilled, although they're not huge, they are slightly larger than I want. I could just force these on there, but they could fall off. See that with hand pressure, they would come away. So I've decided to use this five minute Araldite epoxy adhesive. This has been around for years. You know, I've used this for absolute years. I, I reckon 20, 30 years, maybe I bought my first packet of Araldite. Anyway, this is the five minute version. If you've never used Araldite before, it's, it's really handy. It comes in this double syringe pack and you mix equal amounts of both product. And very important to put the cap back on properly because it's got a keyway on it that only goes on one way. That's to prevent you from gluing the lid on. If you use it once, then use it twice. There's a chance you could glue the lid on if you switched it around the wrong way. Anyway, mixed it up thoroughly. Remember, you've only got five minutes to work. I'll put a small dollop in the hole with a toothpick because I don't want it squeegeeing out and spoiling my paint job on the draw bar or the side of the horses. So just a small amount of glue there. And when you glue these on, the feet of the horse have to be raised off the ground very slightly. Otherwise, the wheels, the front wheels don't turn. So there's a little tip. So let's be reminded of what we started with today. This yesteryear horse-drawn carriage with heavy paint wear and missing decals and missing horses and drawbar. Well, what do you think of this? This is what it looks like now. I do love it. Those decals really finish this thing off and make it look spectacular. I would love to see one of these going down the road in real life. Uh, in particular, I like the pose of the horses. They look like they're actually straining against the weight of the carriage and they are really earning their hay today. And I hope it inspires you to go out and get some Matchbox cars and do your own makeover and preserve some of these beautiful models for future generations. It's such a fun hobby and I do enjoy doing it and I hope you enjoy these videos. So now we've got this carriage fixed up. I'm guessing me and Kevin deserve a little bit of R&R and, &R and uh, we're gonna go for a ride in it. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this show. And until next time, this is Marty saying, see you later. God, everything's so f***ing small.
Oh. <laughs> that can be an outtake. <laughs>